Today, we are going to learn about closures in JavaScript. Guys, there are so many complicated tutorials out there on closure. It's unbelievable. Why do people put complicated examples? So here it is. I'm creating something very simple. Something that you can understand. Something very simple and clear. I'll bet you'll know the fundamental of closures in JavaScript by end of this tutorial. Usually when you create a function, in most programming languages, either you pass some parameters or you define some inner variables. So if you look at this example, here I have a function named add2. I'm passing this parameter passed. I have inner variable with value 2. And I'm returning past plus inner. So in this case, if I say add to 3, means it would add 3 plus 2, and it would return me 5. It's a very simple uh, function that adds whatever number you passed, it adds 2 to it and returns the value. So if I run this example, let's say if I click on a run here, I'm using JS Fiddle for it. Uh, as you can see, it the value is 5. But in JavaScript, you can get by without passing any variables. Now you wonder how, how then if you're not passing it, then how do you get the value? Well, you can define this variable outside, like var passed equal to 3. And I don't really have to do this. I can just add 2. And if I run this, let me clear this. If I run this, I, do, I get the same answer. Now you're wondering, where is the closure in here? Uh, I'm going to get to it. There is, this is a closure. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but it is a closure. So I want to give you a very simple example of how closure works. And, I might, and then I'll give you another example of how to use it. In JavaScript, Variables are, dis are defined outside the function are automatically available inside because JavaScript uses something called lexical scoping. Means inner, variable inner is not uh, accessible outside, but anything that is defined outside is automatically available inside the function. But how does it really do it? The answer is closure. I went to interview once and uh, the guy asked me to, to give me an example of closure, and I did this. And he said, no, this is not closure. And I did something following, and I showed him how this is a closure. He was expecting the answer. He was expecting the answer to be inner function. Yes, inner functions also, when you pass it around, it, they're also closure, which we'll look at next. But this is also a closure. This is a simple, simplest closure. Technically, any very any function where you don't when where you using a variable from outside the scope are actually closures. Instead of running this function, if I just want to look at the function ob because functions are also objects in JavaScript. So if I just want to look at it how it looks like, uh, I can say dir. I don't have to execute execute this. This will let me know inside of the object. Uh, so if I clear this first, and if I run this, um, I would get this function add to. Now I'm going to open this a little bit, and I'm going to expand this function, expand this here. And if I, if I expand this function scope, now I'm using Chrome browser. So if you're using uh, Firefox, it might be a little bit different. But uh, so for this example, I would suggest to use uh, Chrome, and I'm not a. I don't work for Google, or I'm not promoting the product, but I think Chrome is really great for programming. So if I expand this function scope, I would see something called closure here, and if I expand the closure, I would see that variable passed as a property. And the value of that property is 3. So this is how the function add to using 
a variable that is defined outside the function, inside the function, using the closure. It's not a magic. This is a very simple example. So in order to execute add to function, it will look through the variable it needs. Past is not defined inside the function. So what it will do, it will look at the scope outside the function. It cannot find it. It would keep going further until it finds it. If it cannot find it, then it will be undefined. But if it find at any point, then it would add it to the... Now, if I do something interesting, uh, if I change this variable past here to, let's say, uh, 4, I'm going to clear this, and I'm going to run this again. So before the definition, it was 3. Now it's 4. And when I console log it, what should I see? Let's look at it. If I look at the closure, it's 4 right now. So that means if I run, let me clear this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to console log here, add 2, and I'm going to rerun this here. So initially, it's 3. So it's going to print 3 here. And it's going to print 4. Uh, it's going to print 3 plus 2, which is 5. And it's going to print here uh, 4 plus. Let's look at another example, a better example of closure. This is a very simple example. But we're going to look at a little bit. By the way, I'm going to save this example here in the JS Fiddle so you can play around with it. If you can if you can go to this URL and you will see this exact example and you can play around with it. so let's look at this example it's it's similar to previous example but it's broken it's broken down into two functions one outer function which is add to and within this function I have another function called add as you can see the first function I have a variable passed and another function the the inner function i have a variable called inner which is also passed but for for add to this is still inner so that's why i'm calling it inner and what add does is just passing it what add does is it takes the past variable and it adds it to the inner variable and returns it returns so this function returns pass plus inner and the add to function returns the add function itself so let's understand clearly within this add to function we have a function that returns a value and add to returns a function itself so if i do this if i do add to and if i pass some uh, past value let's say if i say a uh, three What do you think it does? It takes this past and then pass it here. So it will return this function add with past value as three. Inner is still not defined. So if I just console dir, I would see it. If I do this and run this, I would see a function return. And within this function, if you look closely, it has a closure. So it preserved this three value and inside. So I can use it like this. Now just pay attention to this. I can actually create another variable called variable add three equal to new add two. 3. Based on this 3, I created this variable add 3. I can actually create another variable called add 4. And I would pass here 4. If I do the console.dir for add 3, and add four. And 
an add tree, I would see closure, that is three. And in add four, I would see closure, which is four. So I have two functions now, add three and add four. Now I can simply, let me count, let me, now all I have to pass is the inner. So if I pass console.log add three one and console.log add four one. What is going to do as you expected it would the first function would add three to one and the second function would call four to one. And if I run this, as expected I'm getting four and five. This means I can create unlimited num num amount of functions. I can create add to 10, add to 100, as many as function as, as I can using closure. It keeps the variable it needed to execute, which is three in the first ex in add three and four in add four. It preserves this variable inside the function as a pro as a property closure, and then when you execute add three, it uses it uses that closure to do the calculation. Closures are nothing but function with preserved data. That's how I call it. I know in JavaScript even the simple things are confusing, uh, but I think you cannot go simpler than this. At least that's what I believe. So hopefully you learned something from it. And uh, uh, don't forget to subscribe um, and like the video. Thank you. If you want to play around, if you want to play around with it, uh, please uh, open this URL and you can mess with this tutorial. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and provide a constructive comment. And if you have a question regarding anything that I've covered in this tutorial, please feel free to actually email me or provide a comment. And if there is any topic that you would like to be covered, uh, then just email me and uh, I will be able to provide a tutorial on that topic within a, a week or two.